Hi everybody, today we're going to chat a little bit about water reading. Now within the rock and surf or any fishing community for that matter, we often talk about water reading. And I don't know if too many of the new up and coming anglers actually understand what we mean when we say we're talking about water reading. So I'm going to try and break up water reading from a rock and surf perspective a little bit and explain to you guys how I personally perceive it, how I read the water and how I determine where to fish in which conditions and how to fish those conditions. So this is all about water reading as I said. It takes many many years of hard work spending hours and hours next to the beach to learn how to read water. So I'm just going to try and give you guys a bit of a heads up and make you understand how we look at the sea when we walk down to the beach and maybe you can start reading water and also develop your own patterns in your own ways of doing it and then catching fish. Today I'm going to chat a little bit about rips. Rips is, a, is a, a part of our water reading we use a lot along the South African coastline and I think it's often underfished. Even myself, I often forget about fishing rips and every now and then I just get reminded that fish actually like rips in certain conditions and they feed in and around rips. So the first thing is, as a novice angler, how do you identify a rip and where does a rip come from? Now what a rip basically is, is a current within the sea and Rips get formed by many different conditions. You can either get a rough sea that forms rips, but in general, a rip is formed between sandbanks or a long trough or a long bank with a bit of a gap through it. So when the water pushes in, it comes over the sandbank, but it's got to come back out again. So what will happen is water will come in over the sandbanks and often in little deeper gullies between sandbanks, that water will suck out again and form a rip, which is a strong current. And there's different types of rips. There's narrow ones, wide ones, side rips, um, but you'll see them. It's where water moves faster than the rest of the water, and often they're so strong that it actually forms a bit of a rapid and you can't miss it. Along our South African coastline, rips are actually very dangerous, and a lot of people drown every year because they're caught in rips. So learning to identify rips as an angler is very, very important. Because as an angler self, we wade a lot, we swim a lot, and the last thing we want to do is get caught up in a rip, get sucked out there, and it can become very, very dangerous. So, how do you see a rip? The way I look for a rip, I look for a few things. The first thing is I look for sandbanks, and if there's isolated sandbanks or sandbanks with gaps through them, I know that there should be a rip somewhere. If the water is strong, it's going to suck out somewhere, and that deeper gully between the banks or within a long sandbank, that's where the water is going to rip out. And you'll often see it, you'll see the movement of that water, you'll see a line where it sucks out. At the back of the rip where it, where it spits out into the deeper water, you'll of, often see a bit of seaweed or a bit of brown water or a bit of sand puffing up as it rip, kicks out that water into the deep. So that's one way to identify rips. So you might ask yourself, where do you need to put your bait in the rip? Me personally, the way I like to do it is, actually when I'm fishing for my shark species and my rays, I like to put my bait just on the outside of the rip. So basically where the rip runs out to sea and it spits everything out there. You'll see it clearly, it forms like a round mushroom head and that's where the bit of sand puffs and a bit of weed and stuff comes out. That's where I like to put my bait, so around that back end of it. Not in the rip itself, just at the end of the rip. And I think those sharks just cut through that end there and they patrol that area and that's where they look for food. When it comes to rips and edible fish, there are certain species that I personally like to target around and in rips. One specific species that I've noticed that, that really likes the rips and use them to the advantage in the Kaiser and Zuland coastline in North Mozambique is the kingfish species. They often work those rips. They are game fish. They hunt small little fish and little shoals of bait fish that caught in these, get caught in these rips and that's an excellent opportunity for a kingfish to shoot through and then just target those fish and catch them unaware. So, I personally, when I fish for GTs, uh, giant trevelli or kingfish species, either throwing the spoon or plug or live bait, I often work the whole rip. I'll start the back end of the rip and I'll work through the rip right to the edge here because they might be anywhere in that rip. They'll patrol the rip, they'll cut through it and come up and down it. So when you're targeting species like, um, specifically like GTs, a rip works very, very well in the KZN and North Coast area. When we go down to the Eastern Cape, we often catch our cob next to rips or just on the edge of rips where they just suck around the point of a bank. So you've got a shallow sand bank working a lot of white water and 
you get a rip, it runs around the edge of that bank. Now, what I think it happens there is there's a lot of mullet in the surface. And normally, with that water sucking out there, those mullet, they actually sit in those rips, they feed on the microorganisms and algae in that rip. And when they get sucked out a little bit too far and they end up on the end of that drip, where it goes around that white working sandbank, your species like your cob will often sit right in that white water. And when they're within reach, they'll shoot you and they'll grab a mullet. So when you're targeting species like cob, those rips are very, very important. Try and put your live bait or your bait just on the edge of that rip, near that white water on the bank where it's working and where you would imagine where a cob would sit and wait for that mullet to get sucked past them and grab it. So guys, that's rips, and, a, and it's a very layman's term of explaining to you, and it's the way I perceive them, but it really works, and if you learn to fish rip, you will really catch more fish.